Everything in this world moves so fast. It feels like we can never catch up. We're always chasing something that feels just out of reach. Like happiness is this thing waiting for us in the future. But the future never comes and we're often stuck in the pursuit. So we take comfort in the idea that the pursuit is what brings us happiness. But what if we've got it all wrong? It feels like people are waking up to that. We're starting to realize that this endless grind isn't the answer. But the thought of slowing down terrifies us. Why do we continue to ignore this problem? We're like the ostrich, sticking our heads in the ground to ignore impending danger, thinking that will make it stop existing. The truth is, most of us don't realize we're caught up in the cycle until something forces us to stop. Whether it's a burnout, a personal crisis, or just an overwhelming feeling that something isn't right. And that's where the art of slowing down comes in. When we pause, even for a moment, we can start to see the bigger picture. We can reflect on why we're doing what we're doing and whether it's truly leading us to happiness or just further into the rat race. Being a monk for seven years, I've learned a lot about the art of slowing down. It's something that nobody in the material world ever taught me. So here are five ways you can master this art. Reading spiritual literature. Almost nobody reads books nowadays, but they're actually the best way to learn. If you're not used to it, start small. Read 10 minutes daily, set a timer. But don't just read anything. Nowadays, anyone can publish a book and call it spiritual. As monks, we're very selective about what we read. This knowledge has to come from a reliable source in order to get the desired result. You can find our recommended reading list in the description. Meditation. The mind can be your best friend or your worst enemy, so it's important to learn how to control it. The best way to do that in this day and age is the chanting of the names of God. This is called mantra meditation. We chant the Maha Mantra or Great Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You can start 10 minutes a day just repeating this mantra and see the difference it makes in your life. Waking up early. The early morning hours are the best time for quiet contemplation, meditation, and learning about spiritual topics. Nobody else is awake, and the chaos of the world hasn't started for the day yet. Eat clean. You are what you eat. As monks, we prepare everything with fresh organic produce, eat vegetarian, and offer everything to Krishna before eating. This spiritualizes our diet, in turn keeping our consciousness fixed on the spiritual goal of life. Association. You are the average of the people around you. If you want to master this way of life, then you have to cultivate friendships with those who are more advanced than you. Living differently in this way is a statement. It's a rejection of the idea that our worth is tied to how productive we are and an embrace of the idea that life is meant for something higher, the pursuit of Krishna consciousness. It means we're willing to prioritize our spiritual growth over the constant chase for more. And that takes courage. It's not the norm. And there will always be people who don't understand it. But once you taste the peace and fulfillment that comes from a slower, more deliberate, spiritually focused life, you realize everything you did before pales in comparison. In the end, the art of slowing down is the art of choosing a life that aligns with who we really are. It's about pausing to reflect on what's important, associating with those who are on the same path and living in a way that fosters spiritual growth rather than material burnout.